This video is going to talk about parallel lines, <clears throat> excuse me, and perpendicular lines. So, parallel lines are two lines that have the same slope and never intersect. And you can see that I've already got this written for you up here. Same slope and never intersect. When you think about parallel lines or you envision parallel lines, you can think of the traffic lines, the, the lane dividers in traffic. When you drive on the road, the center stripe and the little dotted lines that separate lanes have to be parallel because what do you not want cars to do? Intersect and crash, right? So they have to stay in their lane. Those lanes are parallel. If you have a rectangle or a square, the opposite sides are parallel, and that is what a parallelogram is as well. The opposite sides are parallel. So if you look over here at this picture, here are two lines. And there's two ways we can indicate lines are parallel pictorially, and that is with either thick arrows or thin arrows. Either way, these mean they are parallel. So that is something that you will need to get familiar with symbolically. <clears throat> Looking at slope-intercept form, I have these two lines here. Now remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. B is the y-intercept. So if I'm looking at these two lines right here, they are parallel because they have the same slope. Both of these lines have a slope of 3. Let me give you another set of lines. So let me show you this one. These lines right here are considered parallel as well because both of them have a slope of one half. So basically you're going to be looking at pairs of lines when you see it in slope intercept form and just identifying the slope. That's all you got to look at. And we've done this before because we did a parallel perpendicular match. We've talked about this. You had to make sure that your slopes were matching. What if I gave you something like this? If I look at the slopes here, I have a positive 2 and a negative 2. These are not parallel because the slopes are different. So <clears throat> that is how you use slope-intercept form to determine if two lines are parallel. Okay, So that's the first way you can do it. The second way that you can determine if two lines are parallel, you've got slope-intercept form, and now we've got the slope formula. Now the slope formula is what you're going to be using when you're actually given the coordinates that are on the line. Because slope is how we determine if lines are parallel, right? This They have to have the same slope. If you look back up here at the top, I have the slope, slope formula written. It's the change in y over the change in x. Remember we talked about the vertical change over the horizontal change. And I'll rewrite it down here. <coughs> Excuse me. The slope formula is the difference in y or the change in y over the change in x. So the question is, how do I use this to determine if two lines are parallel? Well, sometimes you'll see things written like this. Let's say line AB passes through these two points, a, negative 2, 4, and b, 5, 7. So a, b passes through there. And let's say I have c, d. And c, d happens to pass through these two points. So c passes through 1, negative 5, and D passes through 8, let's see here, I'm trying to make this, um, negative 8. And I want to know, are these two guys parallel? How do I determine that? Well, I'm going to use the slope formula. What I have to ensure is that the slope of AB is the slope, same as the slope of CD. So let's check it out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope 
of AB. So let's kind of, well, it won't let me erase. Let's find the slope of AB first, okay? So the slope of AB, now I'm going to rewrite the slope formula, except for what I'm plugging in. So let's check these out. What are my two, remember Y is on top, what are my two Y values? 7 and 4. Positive 7, positive 4. And what are my two X values? 5 and negative 2. And the reason you can see that I write the formula first is because I don't want you to see the negatives here and assume that negative is the same as that negative. The subtractions need to be there, and then you still add in whatever sign goes with your number. So that's AB. <clears throat> now, before we solve this out, let's check out CD. I'm going to write the slope formula again. So for CD, I've got negative 8 and negative 5. And for X, I've got 8 and 1 for the X values. Again, so I've got Y on top, X on the bottom. So let's check these out. 7 minus 4 is 3. And 5 minus negative 2, that changes to plus a positive, is 7. So the slope of AB is 3 over 7. In order for AB and CD to be parallel, CD must also have a slope of five over seven, 3 over 7. So negative 8 minus negative 5 minus a negative becomes plus a positive. So negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. And then I have 8 minus 1, which is 7. Now, when I look at these, they look very similar, but here's the problem. This one is positive, this one is negative. These guys are not parallel because the slopes are not identical. In order for the lines to be parallel, they have to be identical slopes. So instead of three over, negative 3 over 7 down here, I would have had to have positive 3 over 7. Now, how could I have accomplished that? Let's, let's try something on the second one. I'm going to switch the 8 and the 5. So this is a completely different line now. So in my negative 8 and my 5 are going to switch places. Again, this is a completely different line. So now on the top, I have negative 5 first, and I have negative 8 seven. second. If I do it this order, I have negative 5 plus 8, which becomes positive 3. Now the lines are parallel. So the coordinates I had at first created two lines that were not parallel. They just had different slopes. Now that I've changed the coordinates and given you a different line, see this is a different line completely, you have three-sevenths, which is the same as the first one, so they are parallel. So that is how you can determine if two lines are parallel using coordinates. So once again, you can look at slope-intercept form and make sure they have the same slope, or you can get the coordinates and try the coordinates in the slope formula and see if they have the same slope. So let's look at one final thing here. We can actually look at a graph. Now, when we look at the graph, we still have to look at coordinates, but we're going to be counting. So what if I give you a graph that looks kind of like this? And I'm going to give you two lines. So I've got my coordinate grid. Remember, this is your x-axis, and this is your y-axis. Don't get these two guys mixed up. So let me give you a couple of lines here. Let's say that this is at, I'm going to put a point there, and I'm going to put another point. Let's see. Here. So I'm going to draw my line. So this is my one line there. Okay, and it's a beautiful line because I always draw straight lines. And let's do another line. Let's put another line here, and let's put a point here. And put a point here. Now you've got this graph. 
and you want to know on this graph are these two lines parallel well we can do slope formula if you want to do slope formula or you can count which is the same thing finding the slope remember what I told you the slope formula was it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so if you want to actually draw out the coordinates you just got to pick two of the three points here it doesn't matter which ones or you can and you do the same thing here and you can plug those into the slope formula or you can count whenever you have a graph it's easy to count remember another way to write slope is the change in y over the change in x and another way of writing that is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change <clears throat> the vertical change divided by the horizontal change so let's look at these two lines. So let's look at the red line. And I'm going to go I'm going to go from this one to this one. So I'm going to go I'm going to see what my vertical change is. 1 2 3. So I went up 3, that's positive 3, okay? And I went to the right 1 plus 1. So the slope of this red line is 3 over 1. And here, if we look at the yellow one, let's do the same thing. Let's start here. I went up 1, 2, 3, up 3, so positive 3 is my vertical change, and over 1. So positive 1 is my horizontal change. So guess what? The slope of this line is also 3 over 1. So both lines have a slope of 3 therefore these lines are parallel so this gives you an idea of what parallel means and how you determine if two lines are parallel what we can do further to <clears throat> for application of this is sometimes you'll be given a point and a line and you'll have to draw a line parallel to that point and we will cover that in a in a subsequent lesson but this is just the basics of parallel lines as far as the examples of parallel lines, let's go ahead and let's play the Google game. And parallel lines in real life. So let's look at some images here. This will give you an idea of what parallel looks like. Okay, train tracks. You can see these right there. Not only are the rails themselves parallel, but the, tr the railroad ties are parallel. Okay. When you look at these right here, these lines are parallel. Remember we talked about the lane lines. Those are parallel. Those of you that run track, the lane lines are parallel. Here are lane lines. They're painted on grass. They're parallel. Here's the track meet. You can see all of these lines are parallel. These are perfect representations of parallel lines. If you look at the football field here, all of the yard lines are parallel. They will never intersect. And one additional piece of information that you need to know about parallel is that when lines are parallel, I'm going to kind of go back up to the beginning so I can draw. When lines are parallel, they have one more special property. They are the same distance apart at all points. Since they never intersect and they're parallel, that means they are the same distance apart everywhere. If they're different distances, if you think about it, if I were to draw two lines that were different distances that were not parallel, they're not parallel because this distance is not the same as this distance, and so forth. And since the distance changed, that means the lines aren't at the same slope, which means they're approaching and getting closer and closer to each other on one end and will eventually intersect, which we don't want for parallel because they never intersect. So this is hopefully gives you a little bit better understanding of parallel lines.